All right, welcome back. So I am just selecting my DVD ISO here. What you'll want to do is just probably insert your disk. What I do is uh, I use a command called DD, which allows me to make a copy of my disk as an exact ISO image. Why, why I do that is because I've got a pretty massive file server, and it's nice to have easy access to my ISO images. But essentially, sometimes what happens is you're working with a Windows machine, and it says, insert your Windows disk. You've seen that happen, right? So I like to keep them so that it's, the machine is always connected, so it always thinks that that drive is, uh, is installed, and it works really, really well. So what I've done to do that, now what we can do now that we've created that virtual machine is just right click on Windows 7 or whatever it is that you're installing, that's the name that I gave it, and go settings. Now you'll see a tab that says CD, DVD, ROM, and by default this is all going to be grayed out. So you can set it to mount and you can tell it to use your host drive, which is going to actually allow you to use a real physical drive. Or in my case, I'm, I'm using an ISO image file, which I can add just by clicking the button over here. You can go through the settings of the uh, virtual machine, but essentially, as a novice user, you're going to want to leave everything relatively the same. Get to know the system first and then start tweaking it. The only things that you want to be mindful of is things like if you intend to be using PAE, uh, if you want to use multiple cores of your processor, for example, you want to do those kinds of things first select the amount of RAM that you want to use, things like that. You want to do those first because Windows doesn't always handle it too well if you change those kinds of specs of your computer, your hard drive space, things like that. Another neat feature about uh, modern virtualization under display is that they've started implementing 3D acceleration. This allows us to use a certain number of 3D games. It allows us to use some of the features of uh, the guest operating system, for example, being able to use Aero. Uh, for task switching and things like that. Gives us a few different uh, cool, cool features. If you don't need it, if you're using this for Office, I'd suggest you just leave that off because it's going to be using uh, physical resources of your host computer. Other than that, things should be, for a home network, left the same. Um, users of a uh, uh, business network, if you want to be able to share files and things like that, another thing that you want to look at is your network mode attached to a NAT which basically is uh, okay for home users. A bridged adapter is probably more like what you're going to want for, uh, for use within a, a business network, which is going to allow you to access network shares and things like that. But sometimes it takes tweaking. The other reason that we chose the non-open source edition of VirtualBox is because it supports USB 2.0. So if you have an external hard drive, if you have an iPod or an iPhone and you want to be able to install iTunes into your virtual machine and have a direct connection through USB, here's your chance to do that. So just make sure that USB controller and your USB 2.0 is enabled uh, in the VirtualBox settings. So once that's all set, just hit OK, double click on your machine name, and our virtual machine is going to uh, turn on for the first time. This warning window is just telling me about uh, the capture of my keyboard because as soon as I click into this area, now see I've lost my mouse. Oh, it's back when that happens. Let's see. There we go. So now I've lost my mouse and that's because my mouse is now connected to that virtual machine. If I hit my right control key by default, I get my mouse back. But as soon as I click into that window, it disappears again. So remember that right control key on your keyboard is very important because that's your host key. That's going to allow you to get re, uh, basically get your access back to your keyboard and your mouse for your host. So if I want to keep running other uh, programs on my Ubuntu host, that will allow me to do that. The host key can also be used for things like uh, if you press host F, you'll be able to go to full screen mode once your guest editions are installed. And uh, that's, that's going to be pretty helpful as well if you want to use multiple monitors, things like that. All right, we are booted up into our Windows 7 uh, installer. And again, you'll notice this is what's kind of neat, is that this is a virtual machine. So I can move it around. I can do whatever I like with that. So this is our first, you know, our locality. I'm going to turn off these <laughs> displays because I know how to get out of that. Just watch. Make sure you read those because it's important to know how to get your cursor back. Uh, this is just locality and stuff like that. No big deal. Next. 
Again, fairly intuitive. Install now. That's all there was to it. It's about time. You can do some extra stuff. You can follow some, uh, there's some tips and things, little help documents here. Uh, but essentially, okay, install now. And we're going to get a couple of questions just to walk us through the installation procedure and give us the chance to do a custom install of Windows 7 as well. So if we want to do a dual booting environment, if we later want to install uh, Ubuntu Linux, for example, or Linux, uh, any distribution, I should say, uh, this is a good time for you to partition that hard drive so that, uh, so that you're ready to install your next operating system into a dual boot environment. Here we go. Uh, do we accept? Okay, everybody sees this? Yeah, I read it. Okay, I accept. That's just my Zoom going all finicky like that. So, Okay, so this is where you can do an upgrade if you're using an older version of, of Windows, uh, or you can do a custom advanced install. We're going to do custom. And this, Peter, is where you could do your advanced drive allocation. If we want to click on there, you can create a new partition. You can set up how your partitions work and things like that. This is a good chance for you to do that. In this case, I'm just going to install directly to the hard drive because this is a virtual machine, remember. We're not going to dual boot our virtual machine. If I wanted to have both Linux and Windows in a virtual machine environment, I would just create a second virtual machine and that would be my Linux for example. So there's no point really in dual booting a virtual machine, at least in this scenario. So you'll notice that now that I've answered those very few questions, look at that. Did Windows just tell me that's all the information we need right now? So you mean to, sell me, uh, to tell me Windows 7 isn't going to prompt me and say, are you from Tijuana? Well, I don't, you know, at this rate, it doesn't look like we're going to see Windows 7 actually booting up on tonight's show. I can't see that happening with the, with the few minutes that we have left. But we are installing, as you see, Windows 7 into a virtual machine under Ubuntu Linux, which is very cool, especially if you've never seen that kind of thing before. It's a great uh, opportunity for you to streamline the way things work. 